Hi everybody, welcome to Wanderwell. My name is Amalia. I'm a local tour guide here in Seattle. Today we're going to be talking about something near and dear to my heart and answering a question that I get almost every day. What are your recommendations for local seafood? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Seattle has a famously amazing food scene. We're spoiled to have hundreds of options for delicious dining experiences with a special focus on fresh, sustainable local ingredients. Also lucky for us, in many cases, local means world-class seafood. We have one thing to thank for that, Puget Sound. Seattle is located right on the shores of the Salish Sea in an area that we know as Puget Sound. It's an inlet from the Pacific Ocean that was intricately carved out by glaciers during the last ice age and has been honed by ever-changing tectonic plates. Eight major and dozens of smaller rivers empty into the sound, making this one of the largest and most fertile estuarine regions in the country, second only to Chesapeake Bay, which also has delicious seafood, and which also is definitely located 2,433 miles in that direction. Now, while we're talking about seafood that is not from here, let's have a little talk about lobster. Lobster is delicious, according to a lot of people. Personally, I think it's okay. I find it weirdly sweet, unsatisfyingly mild, and kind of spongy, like it was previously frozen, even if it wasn't. But if lobster is your thing, by all means, enjoy it. But do know that lobster does not come from Puget Sound, or even Washington State, at all, period. The nearest wild lobsters are caught around Monterey Bay, California, which is 765 miles from here. But more often, the ones you see for sale are from even further away, like these gorgeous big daddies from Belize. In the last couple of years alone, not one, but two lobster-centric eateries have opened up within a couple blocks of Pike Place Market. Luke's Lobster started in New York City and now has locations in 10 U.S. states, as well as Japan and Singapore. It has a focus on sustainably sourced lobster from Maine, but does feature an option or two for local Washington seafood, served Maine style, like their Washington exclusive Dungeness crab roll. Down the street from there, you'll find another lobster option, Mason's Famous Lobster Rolls. Mason's started in 2015 in Maryland and now has locations in 11 U.S. states as well as a whole bunch in Washington, D.C. Mason's really leans into the whole Maine identity thing, sourcing all of its seafood and specialty ingredients, even some regional beverages, from the Northeast. Now, look. This is Seattle, and we are not in the business of telling anyone who or how to lobster. So if you also lobster Maine, please enjoy, and don't let me yuck your yums. Just please don't go eat a lobster roll and think you've had authentic, fresh, local Washington State seafood, because you haven't. Yet. Here's the great news. In Seattle, you are surrounded on all sides by delicious local seafood options. There are five species of salmon that are native to Puget Sound. We have numerous kinds of cod and rockfish. Out on the coast, there's halibut and tuna. We have a bunch of kinds of crab. Dungeness is definitely the best. There are clams and mussels and oysters, scallops and cockles, and the largest preponderance in the world of gooey duck. It's enough just to say it, right? You want to put a picture too? Okay. Yes, really, that is real. <laughs> Anyway, here are some of my favorite seafood restaurants. Any conversation about Seattle seafood has got to start right here at Ivor's Fish Bar. They've been slinging fish and chips and clam chowder down here on Pier 54 since 1938. The Fish Bar and the attached fine dining seafood restaurant, Ivor's Acres of Clams, were named for their founder, Ivor Hagland. He was a restaurateur, a local folk music legend, a media icon, and an absolute weirdo. Here on Puget Sound, we have tens of thousands of seagulls in quite a few different species. All of them are pretty big and pretty dumb, but they're not harmful or aggressive or anything. They will make a big mess of your pier, however, if you let them. So around the time that Ivor opened the fish bar, there were signs posted up and down the waterfront that said, don't feed the seagulls. But Ivor had a different take. He encouraged people to feed the seagulls and loved feeding them himself. And now, after all of these years, many, many seagulls have been conditioned to expect french fries if they wait patiently long enough. Like you. 
<laughs> now I absolutely love coming down to Ivers and feeding the birds, but full disclosure, I actually have celiac disease, which means that I'm like wicked gluten intolerant. So there's not a lot that I can have at the fish bar. So we came inside to take a look at what they've got on the happy hour menu. Classic white wine These days, there are 18 fast, casual Ivers Seafood Bars around the Seattle area. They're basically fast food, but maybe a little nicer. It's fast food with sconces, like Starbucks, as well as three full-service waterfront restaurants. My favorite of these is the Ivers Salmon House on the north shore of Lake Union. It's built to look like a traditional Northwest Native American longhouse, and it's filled with native art and decor. It features an unforgettable view of the Seattle skyline from the north. Hot take. I haven't had it since I was a kid because it's full of gluten, but Ivers has the best clam chowder in town. Fight me. Ugh, but please don't fight me. If you're looking for other chowder to compare Ivers to, you can head to Pike Place Market and try Pike Place Chowder. These guys opened in 2003, 65 years after Ivers, and they're famous. Their walls are plastered in awards, their windows are emblazoned with the decals of every food review outlet imaginable, and they've competed in and won chowder competitions all over the place. They have two locations. The first is at Pike Place Market, where they will be the first to tell you there is almost always a line out the door. The second location is an eight minute walk away at a shopping center called Pacific Place. This location has more seating, an expanded menu, and almost never any line. So that's where we're going. They have just one gluten-free option, which is their Manhattan-style chowder. Uh, that is both gluten and dairy-free, good to know. Uh, it's this tomato-based one, uh, and if I'm totally honest, I think this might actually be the first time that I'm trying their chowder. So um, let's give it a whirl. I don't know what to tell you. It's fine. It's maybe the other kinds are like mind blowing out of this world. Um, I find this version fine. It's good mall food. Here's the thing. If you're looking for just an excellent clam chowder experience, Pike Place Chowder is objectively excellent. And my latent disdain for it has everything to do with me and my preference and my personal journey, not with the food. The food is very good. Next up, Taylor Shellfish. This place is great. They have locations in the Pioneer Square, Lower Queen Anne, and Capitol Hill neighborhoods of Seattle, as well as Bow, Washington, and Shelton, Washington. When it comes to, their words, tied to table seafood, it does not get any fresher or more local than Taylor Shellfish. That's because they're not only a restaurant, they're a shellfish farm. At Taylor Shellfish Oyster Bars, you are eating primarily food from Taylor Shellfish Farms, which has been operating on Puget Sound since 1890. They are so engaged and dedicated to sustainable aquaculture that they even have a sale a couple of times a year where you can buy tiny baby shellfish seeds like Pacific oysters, manila clams and mussels, and also gooey ducks, so that you can start a saltwater shellfish garden of your own. It's beautiful! Now, full disclosure, if you're not looking for like a real, real seafood experience, Taylor Shellfish might not be the right place for you. You're not going to find a conciliatory burger on the menu for the non-seafood eaters or anything like that. You're looking at fresh, often raw ingredients like oysters on the half shell, steamed clams and mussels, and whole Dungeness crab, which is a species that is unique to this greater bioregion of the ocean and is, as far as I'm concerned, the best seafood in existence. Now, if we're going to talk about the Seattle food scene at all, I'd be remiss not to bring up Sea Town. For decades, one chef has been setting the tone for outstanding food and warm hospitality in Seattle. His name is Tom Douglas, and he's won a couple of James Beard Awards, written a couple best-selling cookbooks, run high-end but approachable restaurants all over town, and just generally won the hearts and filled the bellies of Seattle foodies for the last 35 years. Sea Town Rub Shack and Fish Fry is Tom Douglas's more casual seafood restaurant. It's located at Pike Place Market and it is out of this world. 
They do have a couple of non-seafood options for those with allergies, vegetarians, and cowards, but mostly the menu features a wide and balanced variety of seafood, like mussels, oysters, black cod, coho and sockeye salmon, and of course, Dungeness crab cakes. You could also treat yourself to a slice of triple coconut cream pie, which is a signature dessert at all Tom Douglas restaurants. I recommend Sea Town to literally anyone who asks for local seafood recommendations. It is excellent. So these are some of my very favorite seafood places in Seattle, but there are so many, many more amazing spots that are well worth trying. If you've got suggestions to add to the list, let me know in the comments. If you're doing research for your trip to Seattle, look at the comments. Don't worry, I'm sure nothing bad has ever come of reading the comments section on YouTube. If you're enjoying Wanderwell, the best thing you can do is like, subscribe, and tell your friends. If you have ideas for other Seattle gems to feature in future videos, I want to hear them. You can leave them here in the comments or email us at wanderwellseattle at gmail.com. And last but not least, if you want to tip your tour guide, I've made it really easy for you right here. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me in my soggy, wonderful hometown. I'll see you next time on Wanderwell.